It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We just finished Betty Crocker's uh, turn on the first round of turns, and everyone's had a turn. It's Junior, Sonny, Betty Crocker this time around. Um, and things are starting to kind of cool as this, at the same time as they're starting to heat up, because Junior is starting to play a larger part in the drama between Betty Crocker and Sonny now. Um, mostly what he's doing on his turn is he got terraforming two during last economic phase sequence and so he's kind of setting up an infrastructure so he's going to start capitalizing a lot on all the nebula that are around him. Um, but he's also moving Logos which is his big fleet fresh off uh, their triumph against the Doomsday Machine. He's sending them to the frontiers of Betty Crocker's, which is really underdeveloped. It's a lot of fresh colonies, not a lot there other than MS Pipelines, as you can see, and a miner. Um, on the, in the Sunny field, uh, Betty Crocker kind of retreated a little bit. Sunny sent forward, forth, brought forth the bringers of sorrow uh, towards the... Uh, colonies that Betty Crocker had been bombarding? Yeah, bombarding. Um, and so Betty Crocker opted to retreat in order to kind of keep poking at him. The Bringers of Sorrow looked pretty impressive. He did just add to them. Um, so, yeah, we remember the Bringers of Sorrow before got annihilated. So this is a whole new fresh batch of sorrow that's coming towards Betty Crocker. And Betty Crocker figures, since he's moving towards him, and he knows that, uh, oh, these are DDs, not Rs. Yeah. But he knows what they are, um, that he's going to be prepared to take him out. So he sent his DDs back. Yeah, those are called destroyers. Not even Wolf knows why they have two Ds and not, instead of just one. Uh, other than that, um, Sonny did send a unit this way or a group. We don't know what that is. He didn't bring out his bringers of pain because he's still threatened here. Um, and then this raider has just been kind of hanging out here, kind of just acting as a threat to these three colonies. So Sonny still kind of has to be on the defensive, but he's, he's able to kind of push back a little bit. Um, what else? Betty Crocker's working on some infrastructure there. He created a new fleet, a home fleet. I don't think he had that before. It's a fresh new fleet with two groups in it, and so that's exciting. We always like to see new new fleets um, and bringers and Greek words on the board. Junior's turn, and the Logos fleet just sent out two of its destroyers to do some exploration, and what he found is going to be game-changing. Uh, recall I have too many counters in the mix. A fellow, oh, what was his name? I don't remember off the top of my head, informed me that I shouldn't have put them all together. But I still am going to keep, I think, all the warp points in there because I think it makes for a crazy fun time. Um, so there's a, it, it definitely makes the game a lot more predicated on luck, but you it, maybe it makes it just a little more tactical too because then you have to come up with creative ways to use these warp points. So the fourth warp point one just came out. So that's connected to here, here, and here. So, um... That makes for an interesting choice from, uh, for Junior. He was going to come in here and bother Betty Crocker, but he could also get in here and, and send his Logos fleet there. At the same time, it makes his, uh, his own borders, uh, which he's kind of extended himself pretty far, trusting that the conflict here would keep him from getting attacked before he's ready. Um, but it makes it so that they're a lot closer. You know, uh, Any one of them could jump into his area right now. Still hopes that the kind of situation over there will keep that from happening, but we really don't know. I certainly don't know, so that's pretty interesting. Also found some asteroids. Other than that, just kind of sent his miners to the nebula. Um, he's going to be getting a lot of bang for his buck on the next economic phase sequence. Betty Crocker has just had a really hard internal debate about what to do about uh, Junior coming in and whether or not to stick to what he's got going on here. He basically doesn't have the forces to really take Sonny on head-on anywhere. But if he can maintain enough threats, then Sonny um, has to remain somewhat diffused. Sonny can't really make a move either. He, uh, the, the consternation came because of this warp points revelation. 
he was seriously considering just coming in and attacking there in order to protect this colony. But the Logos fleet would still be able to come around this way, assuming Junior has two movement, and he doesn't really know whether he does or not. Um, we know that Junior does not, but Sunny doesn't know that. In any case, Sunny could also just come in with one of these, whatever these were. Um, we know they're destroyers, a singular destroyer, but again, Betty Crocker doesn't know that. Betty Crocker did send a unit up here, a group up here, which he's hoping will bluff uh, Junior out, but unfortunately it is a decoy. So if Junior does come in to that colony, it's lost. So what he's hoping is regardless of what happens, he has some shipyards here uh, and he can get a counterforce going to maybe like stem the loss to just being this, this one colony. Uh, and then maybe be able to fight two fronts. He would prefer not to do that, but he he relies on a lot of bluffs. Um, but if he takes enough, to, if he gets enough time, he'll have enough to back it up. Junior called Betty Cl Crocker's bluff and did go in on the count the uh, colony with both of his uh, destroyers there. Um, he also, however. Uh, failed in his combat role against the colony. So the colony remains, but the MSP, MS pipeline and the, um, the decoy <laughs> that Betty Crocker had brought forward are both removed. Um, but actually more interesting even than that is the exploration that turned up this warp point two. So that's going to make this whole tangle of warp points here uh, that's really going to create a, a dynamic uh, strategic field for our competitors to compete upon. So it's Sunny's final uh, turn in the, the round of turns, and I thought I'd explain a little bit about why he's so penned up. Uh, it's mainly because there's all these blue units around here. You can kind of guess at what some of them are, right? He knows these are mines. He thinks these are probably mines because they've been sitting there for a while, but they could be raiders or they could be something else. He doesn't know. Um, he has no idea what's here. There's a frontier fleet, which has a couple things, and then two other groups of units. So if he brings his bringers of pain out, then that leaves all these uh, in jeopardy. There's, an, there's a technology that... Um, all shipyards and bases have that let the bringers of, that would let the bringers of pain move to any of these three locations should there be a problem. Um, but even doing that, that's going to leave one of them open. So he's just keeping him there in case. So that's what keeps that in in check. The bringers of fear here. Um, they want to kind of stand guard on this warp point too, but they're also protecting this colony as well. And um, Betty Crocker chose to leave his battle fleet here. And everyone knows that Betty Crocker has an increased movement capability. So if he moves the bringers of fear one way, then Betty Crocker can come in the other. And so that's what's keeping them there. And then if we look at these kind of like upper two colonies here, um, Betty Crocker kept his destroyers here and it was a choice because he could have brought them in to help protect over here, right? Through via the warp points. They could have jumped in at warp point one when there was uh, just a singular unit when you figured it was a scout. It turned out it was a destroyer. Um, actually, no, he knew it was a destroyer because they had been revealed. But um, he figured he could take it, probably. And he had a battle fleet. He had a number of things that could have jumped into warp point one. Uh, but Betty Crocker didn't in order to keep this kind of two-sided threat here. He has a group of three destroyers here assaulting this colony and another destroyer with some mines here. Now, uh, Sunny doesn't have any minesweepers here, so he doesn't want to go, well, regardless of whether he did it, if he goes one way, then the other one can hit him. But I think he is still going to bring the Bringers of Sorrow over. And the reason why is he wants, he's just kind of pissed, and he wants to get some of the thorns out of his side, he knows that this destroyer can then come in and mess with this one, but this is the, the greater fleet. This is just one destroyer. I guess the battle fleet could also come in. So maybe he won't. He's got that battle fleet glaring at him. Yeah, I think he's going to be inactive again once more this, this, this turn. Yeah. In the final turn of the round, uh, Betty Crocker 
opted to strike back. He sent his battle fleet from warp point two, uh, sent his raider ahead to mess up with um, Junior's infrastructure here, and then the the majority of the battle fleet, which was three armed cruisers, are going to take on the scout that was sitting there on warp point two. So we'll do that combat right now. Um, and I guess this has probably already been revealed to everyone. Yep, so they're going to attack first the scout at, a, at attack class A. And the number to get is three or less. One, so he gets to destroy one of the armored cruisers. Now, you see that they have a hull strength of two, but it's actually one because they're insects. And now the armored cruisers get to fire back, and they are going to shoot... At, they need to get a four or better, I believe. Let's see, what's his? No, five or better. Failure. And that's a success. Um, I could have rolled to see if this became a veteran first, but I didn't. Um, it doesn't matter now because it is destroyed. But I can roll to see if they're a veteran. Um, they need to get a two or better. And they are veterans. That was a great battle for them. They became veterans. And that's going to do it for this uh, episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I'm going to do the economic phase sequence. we got a lot going on now. Everyone's been entangled or beginning to be. And it makes for a lot tougher decisions on our real people's part and a lot more interesting situation for everyone. Although um, maybe harder to, to parse.